What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel After Sound here bringing you Splinterlands content daily. We also stream over on Twitch at This Is After Sound, so come by and say hello. All right, we are talking land today and we're talking specifically DeFi on lands and how that could potentially work based on the comments that we got from uh, Matt during the most recent town hall. Now, none of this, a lot of this is still speculation. Um, you know, it was nice to hear Matt has been exploring a lot of the innovation that's been happening around the DeFi space. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. And he even name dropped a couple projects that uh, I've been following and I'm very bullish on. And so the fact that he's looking at these things and uh, trying to implement them and figure out how to implement them on land, I think is incredibly exciting. So there's two elements uh, that he he talked about, two main DeFi elements that he talked about during the um, town hall. And one of them I can speak to more broadly and we've talked about here. The other one, I'll mention it, but uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit more complex and I think we'll have to wait until we get a little bit more information on it in the future. Uh, so those two elements were uh, automated market making, which is essentially like liquidity pools, and lending. Now, lending is the one that is going to be interesting to see. It's like I said, it's a little bit more complex and I wonder how that would work, but it's um, it's something to keep an eye on and it's something that I'm excited about, especially if you have a good amount of resources or assets within the game. Now, the liquidity pools or automated market making, that is something that we are familiar with or hopefully most of you are familiar with if you've been watching or, or hearing me talk about liquidity pools. Now, if you are doing that in liquidity pools, then, or sorry, if you're getting like the airdrop, for example, in liquidity pools, then you'll know that what essentially it is, is you have two different assets or two different uh, resources. Well, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Two different assets that you can use to provide liquidity to a decentralized marketplace and, and therefore be paid fees for providing that liquidity every time transactions are made. So how is this relevant to land? Well, land coming out is going to provide a wealth of new resources. So there's going to be all these different land types, but under the land categories, you're going to have natural lands and magical lands. And these natural lands are going to have grain, wood, stone, and ore, which will go towards building, uh, upgrading, and maintaining the buildings on these land plots. And the magical lands will have life, death, earth, fire, water, and dragon resources that you that will be used to uh, mint item and spell cards. So these will all be coming from the land. You'll need to work the land in order to get it, but the landowners will then be putting this out into marketplaces, right? So how does this uh, how does this uh, become a a DeFi element? Well. Instead of thinking about them as assets like SPS and DEC, which technically exist outside the game, these are now going to exist inside the game. And my assumption is that we are going to have some kind of internal marketplace within Splinterlands where you can go in and transact grain for wood, grain for stone, grain for ore, um, and then be able to <laughs> or tra transact these different things and then also be able to provide liquidity to these pools so that the... Um, these marketplaces can remain decentralized and not need the game or the team or some kind of middleman to operate them. So the way that it works is you would provide liquidity. You would have two of a certain, uh, sorry, you'd have two different uh, resources. So for example, let's, let's actually dive into one here. You would have maybe grain and wood and let's say I have extra, right? So I've used all the ones that I need and I'm sitting on a little extra. Well, I can go to the virtual marketplace and put grain and wood as a um, as you know the what what I'm adding into the pool, and therefore anytime somebody comes in to swap grain for wood, I would be paid as liquidity pro provider a small percentage fee, and that would be paid out to all the liquidity providers, and I would get my cut of it based on the amount that I have in the pool, and so that allows me to earn passively in these resources. So let's say I have you know grain and wood, I put that in, all of a sudden I'm earning more grain and more wood over time just as you do whenever you put something into tribal decks, uh, the tribal decks diesel pools, or into a liquidity pool on pancake swap or something like that. Or Uniswap is another example. So you're gonna have 10 new resources that come into the game. And actually, it's not, it's not even that they're new, it's just 10 resources that come into the game. And so therefore, these markets will exist within the game rather than kind of on top of it. Because as it stands, we have, you know, we, we have two, I guess you can count vouchers. So three assets with DEC, SPS, and, and vouchers that kind of exist 
both inside the game and outside the game, we can use them within the market, but then we can also extract them from the game. Whereas these resources, you won't be able to extract from the game and there's no reason to, right? But you would be able to probably sell them uh, for, or you know, transact them for DEC, maybe even SPS, who knows what kinds of pools will be created uh, so that you'll be able to take something out of the game through one of those rails, right? So it's almost like a market within the broader market that we live in, the, the open decentralized crypto market. So that to me is incredibly exciting from uh, a DeFi innovation implementation. And if they're able to do that, and it sounds like that's the direction that they're going with this, I, I think that's going to be awesome. And I am super, super excited for it. So, you know, thinking more broadly about this, there's 150,000 land plots. There are 150 regions, which each contain 1,000 plots. So I was trying to think through, you know, how would this market exist? Is this maybe just a market that is, you know, uh, one, one main market that everybody can kind of go to? Or is this something where we could have, you know, maybe every castle... And I believe there's going to be, you know, there's 150,000, sorry, 150 castles based on the 150 different regions. So maybe each of these castles offers a marketplace and maybe the castles then take a small percentage fee of every transaction that happens within their marketplace. And for them, how, how do they incentivize people? Well, maybe they lower that fee. Maybe they offer some kind of benefits. Maybe they do some kind of delegation. Maybe they do whatever the case is. Like that is something that's interesting uh, from a you know, from, from a landowner standpoint. And I know not everybody's going to be a landowner. And that brings me to my final point, And probably one of the most important ones is what Nate has been talking about in a lot of the re recent town halls was how do we make land something that is viable and usable and benefits everybody? Well, these DeFi elements are exactly how, because you don't necessarily need to own any of the land plots to go in and get these resources. You can go in and buy them in the same way that you take outside money right now and buy DEC and SPS and then put them into the pools. So you could play the game. You could essentially just start playing the game. And then as you go along, of course, you're going to need maybe some of these different elements. Uh, maybe you wouldn't need grain and wood because if you don't have land, then you're not necessarily as worried about that. But maybe you go through to the magical elements and you're like, okay, I want to start minting item and spell cards. I'm going to need a little uh, reclaimed souls for death. I'm going to need a little Ulana seeds for earth, right? But I have some extra right now, or maybe I'm building up to what I need. So instead of just kind of sitting on that, I want that to passively work for me. I don't own any land, so I'm not getting any of these, but I'm going to go ahead and start buying and, you know, dollar cost averaging into Reclaim Souls and, and Ulana Seeds. And then I'm going to go and put them into one of these markets and uh, place them in a liquidity pool where I can start to earn more of the death and earth resources. Do you understand what I'm saying? And maybe there'll be some other kinds of benefits the same way that the team does rewards now. And actually a lot a lot of, it's not just Splinter Lens, but a lot of DeFi offers different kinds of rewards for providing liquidity outside of just getting fees. So maybe, you know, again, going back to like the castle owner, maybe the castle owner comes in and says, you know what? I want to offer something so that people start building liquidity on my land here within my market, right? And maybe there's going to be 150 different markets that you could choose from, which seems overwhelming right now. But I think as the game grows, you want that kind of competition out there because, you know, it, it, I, it'll be great if there's, if there's literally millions of players here for them to have different options and for all these different markets to operate in kind of a free open society, free, free open market, um, which would just make things... Uh, we should just make things so complex and so cool. So I'm uh, sorry, I'm nerding out about it a little bit right now. But that's exactly what I'm thinking as we go along, where sure, only maybe a select few, obviously only a select few uh, will be able to own lands. At the end of the day, there's only 150,000 plots. But even if you don't have land, you'll be able to come in, utilize some of the DeFi elements that are are you know going to be implemented. And again, like the automated market maker is is very easy to see now, just because you can we can already or we already have a preview as to what the upcoming resources will be. And then you can start to participate in the market like that, where you just you know you're you're putting in resources, getting them out, using them whenever you need them, minting your own items and spells. And essentially, it's like another form of investing. Now you're not necessarily investing in the you know life and death and earth resources or grain wood and ore because you expect them to go up in value although they could and that's maybe just how the market will work and operate and so people could start speculating on assets within the game but 
maybe you're just trying to build them up over time or you want to be something or, you know, it, like it's just there's going to be so many different ways to interact with Splinterlands on top of the fact that there's so many different ways to interact with it now that I, I'm just so excited for this and to live in the Splinterverse and start, uh, you know, messing around with all these different things. And here's the beautiful part, right? Because Matt even talked about this during the, uh, the town hall. I'm talking about literally living your life inside these games in the sense that you're going to be spending so much time. You're going to be, uh, you know, operating all these different financial levers and things to try and build up your resources and your wealth within the game. In the past, before play to earn, that meant nothing because if the game ever went down or you lost interest or whatever the case is or the, or the company went, went out of business, like you, you lost everything. Whereas now, if I wanted to, let's say I have, I'm sitting on a big stack of grain and I'm just like, you know what? Um, I, I don't think I need the grain anymore. I've, I've maxed out all my buildings. I'm going to sell my grain for DEC and then I'm going to pull that DEC out and I'm going to go buy some ice cream with it, right? Pull it out to pull it out of the game completely, convert it to uh, Bitcoin or a Litecoin or whatever. And I'm going to go to a store that, you know, and then I, you, you get what I'm saying, right? I can go and do real world things with the value that is created and transacted on within the game. So that to me is probably one of the most exciting things for me. Um, and again, I, I'm trying to present this to you in a way where it's just like, it doesn't matter if you have land or not. I do have two plots and potentially might get some more, but even if you don't have land, there's going to be a lot of ways that you can interact with it. And I, did, I haven't even jumped into like what Nate was talking about there being, you know, wild territory and wild monsters on these occupied lands down here where you can go and fight the monsters to extract essence. So you could actually go and use your time and your your uh, skill set within the game to go fight these monsters, extract essences. So you don't even need to go buy something like Reclaim Souls or Ulana Seeds. You go and fight the monsters in this area and you extract some of the essences and then you go and you put them in a liquidity pool and all of a sudden you are participating in the decentralized finance market that exists within Splinterlands. Now, this is all, you know, way, way down the line. I don't think that we're going to get this anytime soon. And I want to be very clear about that because, you know, they, they've talked about land coming out in phases. And to me, this is one of what they mean when they say like, yeah, we have like different phases. This is going to be a very complex phase and probably won't be around for, you know, just being realistic with you. 18 to 24 months. And actually one of the videos that I'm trying to think through of, uh, that I might put out in, in the future is like, if I was to plot out land and this is all just speculation from the outside, it's just like, how would I, how do I see the different things coming through? So maybe that's a video that I'll save for another time into how I see the timeline for land playing out. Now that we know that the first phase is going to reveal the plots and then, uh, it sounds like they're going to have some kind of internal market as well. But I'll save that for another video. The focus of this was just to let you know what I think about the upcoming DeFi elements that will be added to land and how, how exciting that could really be, whether you are a landowner or not. So let me know your thoughts. If you heard something different from the town hall and want to share, or if you have ideas on what they might add, I would love to continue the conversation in the comments section below. So yeah, I will catch you all in the next video and I will see you around the game. Take care.